Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am Charlotte, the trauma-informed teacher, and this is the second video in an advent series that I'm doing during Vlogmas. It is Vlogmas day number nine, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about the Advent week about peace. Uh, many of us think of peace as something that we have in a season where life is going well, but the Bible's definition of peace is oftentimes very different than that. Um, God talks a lot about peace um, through the scriptures in the middle of chaos, in the middle of difficult circumstances, and peace is something that we choose to do based on our belief in the promises of God. God makes so many promises to us through the scriptures, and believing is something that we have to sometimes come back to and renew our minds to and the word says that we're supposed to renew our minds every day um, to the truth of the scriptures so peace is essentially a choice um, in our attitude towards our circumstances regardless of what's going on in our lives i've been reading um a several advent devotionals and one of them that i really like is called great expectations um, by Seminary Now. The second Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of Peace. During Advent, we celebrate expectation for God's redemption. We celebrate love and peace and joy and hope. And one of the reasons we celebrate peace is because of the marvelous words said by the angels at the time of the birth of Jesus in Luke 2.14. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. During Advent, we celebrate the expectation of peace that comes through Jesus the Messiah. And this is a time in history when we have so much expectation for peace because of the many tragedies in our world. There are wars around the globe between nations. There are even wars within nations, within political parties. We have battles that are taking place between the church and the state and between one group of Christians and another group of Christians. We have strife and tension within individual churches, within denominations. As they celebrate Advent and begin to celebrate the coming of the Messiah, both in his first Advent and his second Advent, that tension will become to them more obvious and maybe an opportunity for them to make peace. Um, we celebrate the fact that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. That celebration of the angels when Jesus was born expressed expectations, promises, and hopes from the book of Isaiah. And this devotional, I love it because it goes on to talk about how we are the agents of peace in our communities. So we have an opportunity and a responsibility as Christians to not only um, believe in the promises of God and you know accept that peace that comes from knowing that we can hope in him, but um, we're actually responsible for communicating and um, peace to others around us. And by being strong, um, we're peacemakers. I'd like to read to you um, a section of 1 Corinthians 13. A lot of times we um, read 1 Corinthians 13, we think of it as the section of the Bible that is focused on love. But actually, if you read on past the description of what love is, it goes on to talk a little bit about us having peace as Christians uh, because we know God loves us. 1 Corinthians 13, um, and I'm reading from the Message Bible because I really like this version of this particular scripture here. Um, so it begins in verse 12. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward the consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswerving, unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the, the three is love. And then in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, go after a life of love as if your life depended on it, because it does. Give yourself to the gifts God gives you. Most of all, try to proclaim his truth. 
If you praise him in the private language, God understands you, but no one else does, for you're sharing intimacies just between you and God. But when you proclaim his truth in everyday speech, you're letting others in on the truth so that they can grow and be strong and experience his pre presence with you. And going on a little bit further, it says, Proclaiming God's truth to the church in its common language brings the whole church into growth and strength. I want all of you to develop in intimacies with God in prayer, but please don't stop with that. Go on and proclaim his clear truth to others. It's more important that everyone have access to the knowledge and love of God in language everyone understands than if you go off and cultivate God's presence in your own mysterious prayer language. Pray for the insight and ability to bring others into your intimacy with God. The answer is simple. Do both. I should be spiritually free and expressive as I pray, but I should also be thoughtful and mindful as I pray. So here's what I want you to do when you gather for worship. Each one of you be prepared with something that will be useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. When you speak forth God's truth, speak your heart out. Don't tell people how they should or shouldn't pray. Be courteous and considerate in everything. A very, that's yeah. very loosely, um, loosely read, loosely translated, and this particular scripture is talking about um, speaking in a prayer language, which is speaking in tongues, which I won't go into today. But the the thing that I got out of this, out of reading this in the message translation today that I hadn't actually seen before was the fact that um, peace comes when we edify each other with our gifts. Um, and sometimes we just need another believer to pick us up and to um, fill in the gaps when our faith is waning, uh, to give us strength when, you know, our own personal strength might be flagging, or maybe we've had a week where we haven't had as much um, time with God, that extra person to come alongside us and um, lift us up and speak the truth of God's word over whatever situation it is that's going on in our lives. Uh, that's how we are peacemakers on this earth. So Jesus didn't come just to save you, but he came to save the world. And we can't forget, like, yet, yeah, you know, it's important that the baby Jesus was born to save me personally. But it's also important for me to remember that he came to save the world. And I am part of that. That as a Christian, by proclaiming the truth of God's word over the situations that I'm personally going through in my life, um, to other people and by being strong when I'm having those strong days and speaking um, life over other people's situations, encouraging others, um, being a member of a, a church where I go regularly and I'm putting into other people that that's how peace comes to the world. I hope that this has um, been encouraging to you today and i hope that you're experiencing the peace of god in this holiday season blessings to you happy vlogmas day number nine i'll see you tomorrow